Hello everyone and welcome back to Shonen Archive. I'm Wilkie and I'm here with Zenra. Hello. And here, we're talking about... Wow. Man, take a week off break. <laughs> I know I complained about it in the Get Off episode, but seriously, I'm not a person when we take a week break off. Me and Zen are here. He's to not talk recovered about, yet, folks. No, not recovered at all. Me and he, me and Zen here are talking. You're here to what? Man, what the fuck is going on? It's a complete breakdown as a person. We're here with a series in which me and Zen watch of all Shonen Jump series, past and present, any that are going to be coming forward, or any that have been shown in the past. And we will continue to do this until the end of the universe or until one of us completely breaks down as a person, which is me. So this is the end of Shonen Archive when this episode ends. <laughs> this is <laughs> never recovered. It's over right Never here. recovering from this. <clears throat> and today we're here to talk about Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. As we continue the streak of actual good episodes, because we're here to talk about episodes 27, 28, 29, and 30. Episodes that are, before we get into it, episodes that were actually so good... I kind of felt bad that I wasn't continuing watching Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. That I had to wait until the yeah, week. Yeah, I told you. I told you it picks up. You gotta wade yeah. through the bullshit for a little bit. Once you get past uh, a good 20-something episodes, it really starts to pick up a bit. But this stuff has been really good, so I'm really excited to talk about it. So, Zen, let's talk about it. What we usually Now that you're actually talking about a little bit about the English changes... We will actually go episode 27, 28, 29, and 30 instead of doing the thing where we were combining them because there's uh, duels and stuff. So we'll start with part one, which is Grave Risk Part 1, or, or, or as it's also known as, The Extracurricular Lesson is a Duel of Darkness. First part, guess which one was the English name and which one was the Japanese <laughs> yeah. name? Well, it's pretty easy to tell. So the Japanese version spends a lot of time talking about Duels of Darkness. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if the English version puts a uh, similar emphasis on the shadow games, that is that is the four kids version of duels of darkness is the shadow games. Um, unsure if they put the same level of like weight on it as the Japanese version does, but the Japanese version spends a lot of time talking about um, the duels of darkness as we go forward. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but let's start with this episode. Tell us how it begins. Though. Yeah. So, Joe is walking around at night, um, and he ends up seeing the Slifer Red headmaster talking to someone on like a creepy computer, and then they're like, well, don't turn around on our plan, and he's like, ah, and then he's trying to remember if it was like a bad dream or something. Um, and the very next day, they're out with said headmaster, and they're taking like a field trip to some abandoned ruins. And the only people who end up going are Judai, Sho, um, Asuka, and I think, does Hayato go? I think it's Hayato Yeah, well. Hayato goes, yeah. Yeah, I, there's, a, there's a point where Hayato stops mattering, and so I'm trying to remember when that point is. He matters um, now, Zen. Stocks of Hayato have not been on the rise, but they have been in a steady... <laughs> <laughs> they're in a steady... Steady middling level. Exactly. It's a, it's, a, it's, uh, a, it's a brand you can trust. You can trust in Hayato to be Hayato, unlike M Manjome, who has large... Who had a large <laughs> dip until he came back with the Thunder stuff, and he's been back in with Manjome Thunder. It's a... You know, I'm gonna make my stand here for Hayato now that you mentioned it. Very good character. <laughs> He does what he needs to do, doesn't outshine anyone, but he also doesn't get shit on like some of the other ones do. So I think he ends up yeah, looking pretty like good. Hayato. Yeah, me too. I'm going to get off my horse. All right, we're good. Put, <laughs> put, put down my, my stand picture of Hayato that I'm looking at as we talk, as we do these recordings. Um, <laughs> so they, they go on this field trip to these ruins, uh, and then there's like people at the ruins. And uh, they're actually spirits. Uh, they're the dual spirits of the Gravekeepers. Uh, all of the people get captured except for Judai because Wing Karibo has his back because Wing Karibo is the truest bro there's ever been. Yep. Um, eventually, a woman comes to uh, help them and, and, try, and gets Judai to hide and protects him from being found by the other Gravekeepers. 
and it turns out that she is the spirit of the gravekeeper's assassin. Um, eventually, Judai decides he's going to have to go out and because he's got to save his friends. And the gravekeeper's chief says that he will kill them all unless Judai defeats him. And then he pulls out a dual disc because this is how they, they do things in the dual world as they play yeah. this game. Um, There's a pretty good reference here of how do you have a dual disc? And he says, someone came here long ago. And he doesn't really go any further here. You just kind of go, okay. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll just like, accept right. it. <laughs> you got it, bro. Because um, the way that they play it in a regular shadow game is that giant stone tablets show up, but I guess they've modernized it since then. They realize they probably can't do that for GX. So yeah, you have these fools a dual gotta, disc. Gotta keep the branding intact. Exactly. Uh, and then the duel against the Gravekeeper's Chief begins, and uh, the rest of the episode is just duels. Just the, the action of the duel up until the... It does split into a part two. The duel is not finished in this episode, so in the next episode... The end, the end reveal here is him playing Necro Valley and negating the effect of uh, Rottweiler. Is the reveal, like... First of all, never has Necro Valley negated a worse card than Rottweiler. <laughs> but the reveal that... Yeah, created... well, this is also... Uh, is this the pre-eroded uh, Necro Valley? I believe Pre -nerf. so. But, um, I think so, because this... If you don't know, um, Necro Valley has had, like, just a shit ton of erratas over the years. I think this is the the current effect of it is all Gravekeeper's monsters gain 500 attack and defense. Card in either player's graveyards cannot be banished. Negate any card effects that would move a card in the graveyard other than itself to a different place. So this is before, I think, the big ones. So that the big ones started happening. Actually, let me see what the old one. Now I'm actually kind of curious. You got me curious. Keep talking about uh, talk about the differences between anime while I look up the original effect of Necro Valley. Okay. So the uh, original, uh, not the original effect. I don't know. I just copied what you said. The changes from the adaptation in the Japanese version uh, when show overhears the conversation with the headmaster. It's just kind of like a vague, creepy. What are they talking about? Um, in the English version, they're straight up just like, hey, we need that Jaden kid. <laughs> like, right there. Um, because I guess children watching this can't find things spooky unless it's a gun in your face. Um, the Some other changes. When they're in the ruins, in the Japanese version, they're just like in the ruins. The English version has uh, added dialogue of Chumley whining about walking and whining about being hungry because he is the fat character. Me and fat. they really need you to know that. Chumley wants sandwich. <laughs> Him sandwich. <laughs> Chumley feet hurt. Need food. <laughs> Replenish. That's basically oh, yeah. What... So this is the one of the first times also, uh, at least in GX, where four kids kind of gets into like the weird racist territory with how they edit like Japanese stuff. Um, so if you remember in this one, mm -hmm. there's a certain point where the headmaster of the dorm is like, Oh, I have like a, a bento box, right? Like I have like a special lunch. Um, well in the English version, he says, Oh, I brought a pizza because I guess you can't, tell kids about Japanese culture. But that's not the weird racist bit. The weird racist bit is after that, he goes, oh, I brought a pizza. And Jaden goes, what? You get pizza and I'm stuck eating whatever I'm holding? Which is an onigiri. <laughs> like a rice ball. Whatever rice ball. And he's like good. fucking, he has no idea what it is. And he, the joke is that he doesn't know what onigiri, onigiri is. Because it's, it's an Asian thing. It's not an American thing. So he's like, mm. what is this? Shit. I want pizza. Yeah, uh, good American. Yeah, food. rad pizza. Right, Chumley? Pizza good. <laughs> <laughs> Eat burger. Uh, <laughs> Fry. And then the other change is that in the English, in the Japanese version, they just straight up say, we're going to fucking kill you, like they always do. Yes. And in the English great. version, they say, uh, we're going to make you mummies, which I guess is sort of like killing them. But it, it lacks the whole, like, I'm going to fucking execute you thing that the Japanese yeah. version always does. Which is funny because they, they say mummy in, um, 
No, then no. They in the Japanese version they say we're gonna turn you into a mummy, meaning that we're gonna mummify you alive. And I think in the dub they probably say buried alive, because that's less intense than being mummified alive. Because <laughs> uh, the mummified alive requires like your organs being removed and shit like that. It would be a very unpleasant, um, a very unpleasant. It would situation. be unpleasant. Yeah, and you know, just as you know, I've never actually experienced it. Like, I'm not Imhotep. I don't think I would know how alive embalming would feel like, <laughs> but I assume it's pretty bad. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Uh, there's also a Wizard of Oz reference in the English version of this. Of course, <laughs> what kid yeah. doesn't love the Wizard of Oz? Yeah, when uh, when they get whisked off to the spirit world version of the temple. Uh, in the English version, Jaden says, we're not in Kansas anymore, Karivo. I would watch that movie. If it was actually... <laughs> the Wizard just... of Duel Academy? <laughs> the Wizard of Duel Academy. He summons Elements of Hero Bersinatrix to take down the those trees that are talking shit in the Wizard of Oz. Uh, oh, this is also interesting. In the dub version, because for some reason, you know, the dub version changes the art, right, of the cards. Mm -hmm. In the dub, all the cards are different. Um... In the dub version exclusively, when Gravekeeper's Assassin is summoned, the card art on the dual disc is Infernal Queen Archfiend instead of Gravekeeper's Assassin. That's pretty good. That's funny. Don't know how yeah. you fucked that up. I have yeah, no idea how you fucked that up. That's a pretty big fuck up. You've also just made me realize, because I've never realized it, even in my notes I call her this, I never realized Gravekeeper's Assailant's Japanese name is Gravekeeper's Assassin. It makes yes, a lot it, of sense. It changes the silence in the in the English version. This entire because time you can't I was, say the word assassin. No, you you in, can't say assassin to, to children. Um, but yeah, in uh, in the English version, it's assailant. In the Japanese version, it is assassin. That's funny. I never even realized it. All these years, I was like, oh yeah, that's just Creep Keeper's assailant. Never in my mind that I was like, she was an assassin. Because I was trying to think of, because all the Gravekeepers have like a function as to what they do for the Gravekeepers. And I was never 100% sure what the job of Gravekeeper's assailant was supposed to be. Yeah, just just assaulting people. <laughs> yeah, I was like, who? I guess they just need someone to like do knife crimes or something. But no, it makes 100% more sense if she's an assassin. Just doing knife-based crime. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so I have it here. So Necro Valley, if you don't know, has had seven erratas. God. Yeah, so in the original the original text was this was the original effect of Necro Valley. As long as this face up uh card remain as long as this card remains face up on the field, all effects of sp uh, magic cards, magic, trap and or effect monster cards that involve graveyards are negated and neither player can remove cards in the graveyards from play. In addition, increase the attack and defense of all monsters that include Gravekeepers and their names by 500 points. This was back in the day when all Yu-Gi-Oh! wording was just really weird. And, like, it's like, it's a field spell, obviously. Yeah, very obtuse wording back in yeah. the day. And now, nowadays, with its seven errata, this is what it is. All Gravekeepers monsters gain 500 attack and defense. Cards in the graveyard cannot be banished. Negate any card effect that would move a card in the graveyard to a different place and then also negate any card effect that changes types or attributes in the graveyard do you want to take a quick guess as to why they added that it's a very uh, it's a know. very specific card it's because of a uh, zombie world because zombie world changes the attribute of cards in the oh graveyard. right it turns them into zombies yeah and this was also back when because back in the day when you played a field spell um that only one field spell was allowed to be up at a time. It's not like today where both players can have a field spell up. Back in the day, only one field spell could remain. So the best way to get rid of a field spell was to play a field spell. <laughs> yeah, it was to play your own. Yeah. Though funny enough, back in the day, field spells, except for Necro Valley, were kind of trash. It's not like nowadays where there's just a shit ton of them that are super good. Yeah, they were all pretty shitty. Like, Zombie yeah. World and Necro Valley were like the only good ones. Yeah. And that and Zombie World was I actually don't remember when that one came out, but yeah. But point is, Necro Valley has been keeping it strong for a very long time. That effect is still good today, which is kind of crazy. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty crazy to stop people from using graveyard stuff. It is. So, 
here's my notes specifically for um, this episode. Uh, I remember. Oh, that's right. This is what he says in Japanese. I, I took a note of this one. If you lose, you will have your liver cut out. That's what he says. And then he says, we will mummify you. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, it's, that's a very strong thing to say here. I think there was a lot of bits here where um, I think this is the first time it's ever been shown that Jaden has an interest in a girl. Because Gravekeeper's ass- uh, assassin is constantly next to him. Not in a, like, a weird way. She's just very pretty and always constantly being like, come close. And, we- and you need to make sure that you're not like seen by anyone. And he actually kind of blushes. And I think in the next episode it kind of reveals like he actually kind of cares about her. And uh, I'll just say it makes a lot of sense. Because Gravekeeper's assassin without the hood up actually looks extremely pretty. <laughs> like I had yes. no idea. If you look not, at the uh, not in the card art, but just regularly. No, in the card art, I actually thought for the longest time this this reveal I remember when I was a kid was actually surprising to me because in the card, Gravekeeper's assassin, you don't see anything like woman like in what they see. It's just a person in a cloak. Yeah, it's just a cloak. Yeah. But in in the anime, you can pretty clearly see that that's a lady <laughs> under the cloak. It's a very nice, pretty lady as well. So. It was a very good setup episode, but let's talk about more. I'll talk about more stuff in the in the next episode that we got here, because this is the actual end of the duel. So go ahead. Yes. So the duel happens. It concludes. Jaden obviously wins. They have this little kind of like mutual respect moment with Gravekeeper's Chief and Jaden. Um, Gravekeeper's Chief says like, "Oh, you're the second person to ever survive a duel of darkness here." Um, and he gives him half of this like amulet, and he's like, the other person who ever beat me um, has the other half. So the amulet will help you if you are ever stuck in a duel of darkness in the future. Um, eventually, I think the headmaster's like, I knew you you would do it, uh, Judai, and they're all like, what the fuck are you? What? <laughs> what are you talking about? And he's like, oh, nothing. Um... <laughs> It was also and a pretty good the, gag when the, he was in the coffin where he's like, I can finally see him do a shadow, uh, a dark duel. And then he goes like, I actually can't see anything from the fucking coffin. <laughs> I just realized. <laughs> that is pretty funny. Um, and then the Gravekeeper's Chief is like, yeah, you have to go back um, to your own world through like this special gate. Um the Gravekeeper's assassin saves them because some of the Gravekeeper's guards are like, nah, fuck that. We're going to kill him. Um, they're running toward the gate trying to get away, and Wink Rebo is guiding them to it so they can escape. Uh, Hayato falls down, but Des Koala picks him up and Fucking carries the, him the rest amazing. of the way. Amazing. The great, the goat. <laughs> he shows up and carries Jubbly when you... <laughs> when when Hayato only saw two feet of the sand, that's when <laughs> Deskawala was carrying him. <laughs> so good. I actually did uh, and then they have a great back moment for their this world. One. Yeah, they make it back. <laughs> I had such a pop up moment when I saw Deskawala show up to fucking save the day at the last second. I also did feel like, where the fuck were you <laughs> when they were in the beginning? He only shows up at the end to be like, okay, now I really like. At this point, he was like, oh no, they had it. You know, they 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 got. They don't need me for the rest of this bit. But at the end bit, he was like, okay, no, they need me. He needs me. The <laughs> big boy ain't gonna be able to get out without me. It's time for me to intervene. <laughs> so yeah, very nice ending to that episode. Why don't you tell us the differences in adaptation before I get into how I feel about it? Okay. Yeah. So uh, the scene that you talked about, the gag where um, the headmaster is like, I can finally witness Judai's power. And then he realizes that he can't see because the coffin has covered his eyes. Mm-hmm. Um, that is cut in the English version. They just cut it out. Really? Yes, completely cut the scene. Um, in the jack, when uh, Judai is talking to the chief and he says that uh, his hero is Yugi who frequently had to battle again in Duels of Darkness. Uh, and because he's going to become the King of Games, he's going to do the same. In the English version, he just says, I'll rescue my friends. What? That's another crazy uh-huh. change. 
Because that completely... In... No, go, go ahead and say the last yeah, one. Yeah, it totally changes like the, the scene. But And then the last one is, in the Japanese version, when the Gravekeeper's assailant uh, doesn't follow the Chief's commands, he, he uh, hits her, he smacks her in the face. Um, in the English version, he's just like, that sucks of you, you should stop doing that. And they cut out the scene where he hits her. Yeah, I was actually kind of surprised when he slaps her. He just very quickly was like, listen next time. It's a quick slap. But, uh, yeah, that makes sense. You can't just slap a woman on <laughs> on a kid's show. That's just not something they're going to do. And then another weird dub error when fixing the card art. Because, again, in the Japanese version, the cards just look like Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Like, they have the borders and everything. The English version just has that the full card art and then, like, the colored bottom. Um, when Judai wins... One of the cards on the Gravekeeper's Chief's dual disc randomly becomes the Dark Magician of Chaos. <laughs> how? How do you fuck? I, <laughs> not even... I don't know how you're fucking that up. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know how you're fucking that up. That's an intense fuck up. That's someone going, you know what? That's a deliberate mistake. I'm going to say it right now. Someone was having a fucking laugh on that day and said, you know what? I'm going to replace it for a bit. I'm going to replace Spear Soldier with Dark Magician of Chaos, see if anyone cares. And it turns out years later, someone did care and noticed. Um, just to talk a little bit more about these differences, it's actually kind of crazy. I think this is the act, I would say the start of where one of these differences dramatically changes certain aspects of like story stuff because first of all, this reveal here that they don't mention the fact that he's witnessing it. I feel like that very much is there to kind of set up like maybe for whatever reason, it's very clear that he did this on purpose so that he would be forced into this game. And I don't know if in the English version they didn't want him to be revealed to be too evil or something. It's a very well, weird... Well, that's the thing, because they took that scene out in the English version, right? Mm -hmm. But then the English version also changes the beginning, where he's, like, scheming to get Judai there. Uh, the Japanese version leaves it vague, but in the English version, they're straight up just like, you have to bring Jade in here so we can be evil to him. So That's... it can't be that they don't want to like ruin the reveals or anything like that, that he's like a schemer. Yeah. So I, I don't know why they cut it out. Yeah, maybe it was because it's too... Because like, in the Japanese, at least where I'm at right now, I feel like there's probably... There's no good intention in forcing someone to go into a, one of these games. So I'm assuming that it's evil. But at the same time, you could also make the case of they know that these dudes are coming to the island, specifically coming for the for the phantom beasts so he needs to be prepared and actually be in one of these games to see if he's up to snuff basically so i could see it from kind of two ways depending on which way it kind of goes you don't have to tell me but i could see it kind of being seen as either one of the ways but maybe in the dub they felt like no we just need to let him know like we can cut this scene and then we can have the guy going whoa, 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 have a shadow game <laughs> <laughs> It's 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 a very weird change to me. I think it's obviously th this is one of those ones where I'm like, yeah, that they didn't handle this one all the well, very well. And in terms of the other one here, the this cut line about Yugi Mo Yugi basically being able to win a bunch of dark games. When I saw that in the Japanese version, I was like, do people just know that he played the Shadow games? Because it was under my assumption as someone who has never seen the Japanese version of specifically Yu-Gi-Oh! That nobody knew about Shadow Games. <laughs> that it's just like something that some dudes do. But this completely changes the world if there are people who are like, Oh yeah, yugi Moto, the king of games, yeah, he dueled a bunch of dudes to the death. <laughs> That's crazy. That changes the world well, of everything. Well, I mean, the, the thing that made Yugi famous was Battle City. And I mm -hmm. mean, it, it's probably pretty hard to... Ignore not the talk about them considering Yami Marek was just all over that fucking place. Yeah, yeah. There, there was God cards and there was clearly a lot of like, there's probably a very good documentary in World about Battle City, about how about how it there was is. over... There is, they talk about it in GX. There's DVDs really? of it. Yeah. Oh, dude. I would watch the shit out of that. <laughs> like a documentary. Okay, so down. in the manga at least... There are literally DVD like replays that you can watch of all of Duel Monsters because there's at one point where um, Bastion is trying to get um, Asuka's phone number mm -hmm. and 
Judah's like, oh, I have it. I borrowed her Duelist Kingdom DVDs, uh, and I have to give them back to her because she won't let me borrow Battle City until I return these ones. So it's all, like, been recorded for people to go back and watch, like, the replays yeah. of, of Duelist Kingdom, Battle City, all that shit. Does that mean that they have a replay of Bakura killing the three dudes in the graveyard? <laughs> <laughs> Because, uh, that's very. When he that's, just nukes, uh, Bones. Yeah, when he. Bones and the other two guys. When. Because that's clearly a murder being taken place in a graveyard. That's how he's able to, um, even go into Battle City, is that he duels him in a graveyard and then it's a shadow game. And then in the English. I have never seen the Japanese version, but in the English version, he gets sent to the graveyard, I think. I assume in the Japanese version, Bakura just straight up, straight up murders him because that's what he, how Yami Bakura actually gets stuff done. Is he does? He's not really one of those dudes who are like, ah, yes, I'll send you to a different realm to forever live in torment. He's more like, nah, I think I'll just kill you. I think that sounds like a pretty good yeah, thing. Yeah, he, what do you he think? just straight up uh, murders them in the Japanese version. Wow. Same way that Pegasus dies in the manga and lives in the anime. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, spoiler, in the Yu-Gi-Oh! manga, Bakura just fucking murders Pegasus. Yeah, and it's pretty rough, too. He just rips that fucking eye out directly. <laughs> yeah, he just grabs the Millennium Eye, rips it right out of his head, and then licks the blood off of it, which is unhygienic. Yeah, yeah very unhygienic, but man, I love I, gross. I, also, yeah, I love Yami Bakura. Gonna get so the monkey much. pox doing that. <laughs> I'd say he's K zero in Japan for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that, I thought that was a very interesting line. It does change a lot of what I kind of view of this world specifically, in which an entire world dedicated to dueling. And now you've also kind of flipped my mind here about the idea of like it's on DVD and you can buy like a best of the best of Joey duels volume 27 where you can see some of his greatest hits that's kind of crazy to think about you too can see him duel mako tsunami if you so wish so yeah very weird change i guess the reason they changed it is that they wanted to keep they didn't really want to bring up yugi if there was no chance of him showing up maybe what do you think i feel like that's the number i don't know because i mean they it's not like they didn't have the whole episode of the copycat kid using Yugi's cards. Yeah, you're right. Um, I don't know. I think it was just we need to give him generic ass hero dialogue, because mm. the, the all they replace it with in the English version is "I'll save my friends no matter what," and that's like a lot of the the changes in the dub are like Judai has to be like a soup. Yeah, for my friend, because like that was a lot of the thing in Duel Monsters too. Is that in the Duel Monsters dub, my friends is like every fourth line, you know? So, my friends have no pathetic cards, Kaiba, but they do have <laughs> friendship. Yeah, okay, that that would make a little bit more sense to me of them just kind of going like, eh, this let's just really push home the whole friends thing. Um, yeah. And let's talk about the actual duel here. I actually really en- ended up enjoying the duel because I, th- as I mentioned with the Moki Moki, I think the game is best. When it when if it's a specifically not this because this isn't really a filler, but if it's someone who is not a main character with not their main character deck, I really just want to see a very interesting archetype. And Gravekeepers is that to me because it actually does kind of change a little bit about what Jaden has to play around because he has to play around Necro Valley and stuff. And then I do think I also like that this was kind of their introduction to Necro Shade, where they're like, "What's the best way of showing off Necro Shade's ability?" How about the fact that it's not affected by Necro Valley? And this was such a thing that I had it, to actually... That it's like one of the few cards that can sneak around yeah. Necro Valley. Yeah. So much so I had to actually look up the ruling to see if that was true. And they're like, no, that that that's true. Because he's not removing anything from the graveyard. He's just letting you special summon. Yeah. And that's personally... He's not, allowing I also you to think it's not an ignition effect, right? It's just like you can do it if he's in there. Yeah. And you can also, I also learned this because I looked up a lot of Necro Shade tips after this. If you return him to your hand after he's been in the graveyard and he returns to the graveyard, you can do it again. So mm-hmm. it's definitely one of those effects that will not be affected by um, ne- uh, by uh, Necro Valley at all. Necro Valley. So it ended up looking pretty good to me. I put here in my notes that at one point the chief had the game and he starts BMing. And that's how he loses. Because <laughs> he had the ability to win. And it was a pretty clear, decisive victory because, you know, in a format where most monsters are going to be... I think he used Royal Tribute, 
which is how he got rid of Necro Shade. Um, and then he also had like multiple two thousand something monsters on the field. So really, he had the game won, but for some reason, he didn't go for game. He decided to just kind of BM him and be like, haha, loser, you lose. And that's how <laughs> Judai wins. Uh-huh. Which is pretty <laughs> pretty funny. This is, I think, the first time I've ever seen for it. Um, but yeah, it was a very good duel. And like I made a note yeah, of here. Yeah, this also kind of helps with the world building a little bit because it's the first time other than um, with Jidzo where we're dueling a dual spirit. And you see that when he summons the monsters, it is the the spirits that are just living there. Like, the girl who helps him is the Gravekeeper's assassin. And so when he summons Gravekeeper's assassin, she's the one that that takes the field. Yes, yes. I thought that was very cool as well. I also, I liked it in Jinzo as well. That was a little bit more silly when Jinzo said, I summon Jinzo. Jinzo, me, attack. (laughs) It worked a little bit better here. (laughs) And maybe it's because Jinzo, because the Gravekeepers actually have an archetype and it's not <laughs> Jinzo just going, go Jinzo, do your thing. It ended up working for me. Um, and then for some reason, I really liked Gravekeeper's Assassin as well. I thought it was a very interesting way of showing. It, I think it's the first time Judai has ever, it was really bizarre to me because I'm actually kind of curious if they kept any of it for the dub. Because it's like the first time he's ever shown an interest in a girl at all is specifically Gravekeeper's Assassin. Um, I, it's funny because he's that, like he doesn't see Asuka in any way, form as a girl that he could be interested in. But this woman with like a, with like a knife that attacked him, he's like, yeah, there's something about this girl that's special. <laughs> and it kind of made Hard me argue feel... argue with a knife. Yeah, I'm kind of feeling Judai on this one too. I'm like, you know what? If I was in that situation, you're right, man. <laughs> I feel, would feel something. It's very, very pretty monster. So it's a, it was a good ass two episodes, a good two parter, um, and very enjoyable and a good duel as well. So glad to see good shit continuing. I should also mention the title for. Did I mention the title for this one? I think it's just basically the second part, the extracurricular it's, lesson. It's the same title, but part two. Okay, just to be sure on this one. So yeah, good stuff on here. How do you, how do you feel? Yeah, they're good. Um, I enjoy the um, any any time that they're doing like spirit world stuff. Minor spoiler alert: the spirit world becomes very important later on, as I'm sure you can imagine, given what happened in this episode. Mm-hmm. Um, so I like when we get little sneak peeks of it. It's it's not for a while that it really kind of jumps up in importance, but um, Yu Gi Oh GX has good world building because you you get like a lot of this stuff shown to you early on going to the spirit like you know about dual spirits from the very first episode with Link karibo and now you actually get to see the spirit world where like they just live right like that's yeah. that's their thing is that this is their realm um so i enjoyed that little bit of it and i like uh the gravekeepers just again like as a as an archetype it is cool i like that in gx there's a lot more like archetype based duels whereas yeah. in dual monsters it was just like I'm Kaiba and I play Blue Eyes White Dragon and then just a bunch of bullshit. I or the same as like Yugi where it's like I have my one copy of Dark Magician and then just whatever the fuck else. Hello, Gazelle, Gazelle the, the King, King of, of Mythical, Mythical Beasts. Beast. <laughs> my, fa- the, um, my, the, my true compatriot, Celtic Guardian and Luis the, be- the Beaver Warrior. The Beaver Warrior. Yeah, Barrel so I like him. that in GX... Um, it's where it kind of begins being a lot more about archetype cards instead of just yeah. like whatever it's, the fuck I play this instead of Kaiba who's running uh, Blue Eyes Turbo who's just going like I need to summon Blue Eyes <laughs> that's all I need to win yeah it does make it a little bit better I, I agree with you on that one for sure um, though you do end up in a case where it's like I don't know. Maybe it is just a little bit of the nostalgia, but there is a part of me that is always laughing whenever Gazelle gets summoned because it's such a terrible card. Doesn't really fit an archetype. Actually, funny enough, if you look at Yugi's deck, his deck monsters eventually get their own archetype just because he doesn't really have his own. <laughs> That's how yep. powerful nostalgia is for a lot of things. Is that specific cards in both in all the main characters' decks get their own kind of archetype later on. Even the Harpy Ladies don't really get much support until around the GX era, I'll say. Because there was like Harpy Lady stuff, but there wasn't a- enough cards to 
justify an archetype. It was just like it would take until when GX does, to like Cyber Slash Harpy come out. Mm, the Synchro Monster, or you mean the Cyber? That's like when Harpy's shit gets real good. Yeah, when Harpy Queen comes out and Harpy's Hunting Ground comes out, I think that's around Volcanic Era. I say, I'd say. That's when a Harpy deck went from haha, what a funny joke to fuck, I can't believe this person's running this stupid deck <laughs> with this stupid hunting ground. At least that's what I remember from it, at least. But yeah, let's move on to the next episode. Episode 29, Doomsday Duel Part 1, or as it's known in Japanese, Versus Darkness, First Part, Red Eyes, Black Dragons Challenge. Yes. So we learn from the headmaster of all of Duel Academy that duelists known as the Seven Stars are going to be coming, uh, trying to get access to the Phantasm cards, which uh, mm-hmm. are the the fan. What are they? The Phantom, Phantom or something? Beast. Phantom Beasts. Phantom Beasts. Yeah. In the English version, the it's Sacred, Sacred Beast. Beasts. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in Japanese, the Phantom Beasts. And uh, in order to do so, they have these seven keys, which seal them away in like a cave below ground. And he wants to give them to the seven best duelists on the island because he sees someone like flying down onto the island and he realizes that they're coming. Uh, Darkness is the one who flew in. And he is wearing the other half of the amulet that Judai just got from the Gravekeepers. Um... When they all are leaving a class, the Slifer Red headmaster tells them that they need to go to like the main principal's office, and that's when they decide that who the duelists are that are going to get the keys. It's going to be Manjome, Asuka, Daichi, Judai, uh, Kronos, and Kaiser. And they're going to each get a key to defend the Sacred Beast cards from these seven stars. They're like dual assassins or whatever. Um, the only way that the keys can be won is if you lose them in a duel and so he gives a key to each of them and they all kind of get prepped for the potential of being challenged by one of these people um, except for uh, Kronos who takes a deep sleep yeah Kronos is not thrilled that he is one of the duelists that has been chosen all the students are like fuck yeah um, Kronos is not super happy um, they're talking in, in the room, and Judai's like, well, I think it makes the most sense to go after the um, the strongest duelist, so they're going to come after me, uh, which is funny, because I think then that's when Crowler corrects them, and he's like, yeah, so so Kaiser's going to be the one that does it. Yeah, because he um, says, like, my secret reports tell me that you lost to him handily. That's when he finally yeah. reveals <laughs> that, like, hey, I knew that you lost, bit. Finally, <laughs> I know. Uh, Asuka seems to have the inverse idea, and she thinks that they're going to target who they believe to be the weakest, and so they're most likely going to go after Judai because of his uh, dorm placement, because Slifer is supposed to be the shitty duelists. So she goes to um, like defend him, and then they get whisked to like a volcano. Um, yes. And they're over the, the lava in the volcano, and Darkness reveals he has captured Hayato and Sho, and their orbs are going to, like, they're in, like, these orbs of light, and the orbs of light are going to fade away, and they're going to fall in the lava and die. So Judai has to win the Dark Duel and rescue them in time. And then, uh, pulls out, like, a Pegasus card, and he says that uh, whoever loses, their soul's going in the card. Yeah, he does. He brought, he Judai out the soul has his card. little amulet, and he thinks back on his duel with the Gravekeepers, and he says, all right, we're 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 dueling. And the duel starts. And it kind of ends on a cliffhanger. Yeah, it ends on a cliffhanger after something with Rampart Blaster. Something happens to Rampart Blaster, I think yeah. it ends on a cliffhanger. It does, um, yeah. So, tell us about the differences, then. So, there are some uh, pretty neat ones in this one. So... In the very beginning of the Japanese version, there is a meeting 
between a character named Kagamaru and the Seven Stars. Um, English version cuts this out completely. So there, the the interaction between like Kagamaru and the the villains of the arc is completely cut out. Um, the the Japanese version. This this arc is where it begins to become very noticeable that the Japanese version treats Kronos very differently than the English one. Um, where the English version largely treats him like a joke, punching bag character. Uh, the Japanese version, he's kind of like a good guy, sort of, now. He's like still a douche, but like he's not like a shitty person, per se. Um, in the Japanese version, Kronos takes the key, and he tells the principal um, that he doesn't agree with having the students duel. He he thinks that it it would be it's too much for them. Basically, he says like it it would scare them. It's kind of fucked up to put that on kids. And In the later, English version, yeah. he takes the key and he says, um, "I want fancy jewelry in return for doing this." Yeah, that's kind of a shitty thing. It's a real yes, a real not, character difference there. Yeah, that's a, that comes a completely change it because, like I said, when he says that to the the principal. Later on, the principal does kind of think, like, I think I fucked up. I really shouldn't have told those kids to take them. This is... I've made a... I've made a huge mistake. (laughs) So, yeah, that's a huge character difference for sure. I would say almost a borderline character assassination on the English part. Correct. Yeah. Um, And it keeps happening, so look forward to those. You're going to get a lot of those, especially with Kronos uh, as this progresses. Um, there's also some scenes in the Japanese version. There is a language joke in this one, which obviously never make it over because they're impossible to move over. But it's pretty good where Judai um, calls Kaiser Sho's Aniki, which is Big Brother. But that is not how Sho refers to Kaiser. He calls him just like the, the respectful version, which is like Ni- Nisama or whatever. Yeah. Um, Nisama. Yeah, and so everyone assumes he's talking about himself because that's the way that uh, show refers to Judai, but Judai's actually talking about Kaiser. Pretty good joke. Um, yeah, I thought it was pretty funny. In Someone the English who... version, they just say that Jaden's not taking it seriously enough because he's he's too excited about dueling them. Yeah, that's a uh, not as good. I really, I like, I actually really no. like this joke as someone who plays a lot of the Yakuza games, and I know that Aniki means big brother or bro. And the fact that he... I've also been a little bit confused as to when he says bro and when he means his brother. Because <laughs> there's times where people have said, like, your bro? So, Kaiser? No. Judai? <laughs> Bronicky? Him? How do you not get this? <laughs> and it's like, it's the same fucking word. Just means slightly different. So, I thought it was a good gag. I understand why they would cut this, though. It doesn't make any sense in English. <laughs> unless yeah. he did... Unless they changed Cyrus's entire thing and said... He started calling... Uh, uh, Jaden bro but then that would change his characters because people who go bro aren't typically meek and sh- and shy he, like he does Cyrus call is. him bro in the English version yeah mm, come on bro oh man really okay then I don't understand what yeah. they, I could have still worked out well, you know but maybe that that would then make it seem like he's an idiot at that point it would seem like you're a little bit too <laughs> dumb for this that's too stupid yeah yeah fair enough um Another Very difference hard. is that when Darkness arrives in the Japanese version, he says that um, he could tell that Judai had the other half of the pendant. Um, and that's why he was able to find him. In the English version, he says, oh, the Gravekeeper must really suck to have lost to you. <laughs> it's just a dick for no reason. Yeah, very asshole. Because I realized it's like, oh, he has the same thing. He must be the person. But doing that in English just makes it seem like, oh, he's just a dick. <laughs> he's just. Mm-hmm. Let me very quickly state: yes, I am that guy they mentioned in the previous episode that you probably watched. It's me. Yeah. Hello. It's me. Nitroud, um, <laughs> which is his name. And in also, English. this is. Yes, in English, in Japanese, his name is Darkness. In English, it is Nitroud. Nitro, <laughs> great English um, name. Yes. Also, a funny little joke here. Um, I don't know if this exact joke is in the Japanese version. I don't remember, but in the English version, um, show is stressing about a shadow rider showing up in the middle of the night, which one actually does. Um, 
But he says, well, oh, you're going to go to bed, Judai? What if a Shadow Rider shows up? And Judai says, well, I'm sure they'll just wake me up. Which is actually accurate because a Shadow Rider literally cannot steal the key. He would have to wake Judai up to start a duel. <laughs> so Judai is completely correct. Yeah, he's right on that one. Uh, they don't have that joke in the Japanese version. <laughs> it's a little bit too, well, honk, honk, like very <laughs> clowning on the whole situation, making fun of the fact that they can't actually get to him unless they specifically um, ask for a duel, basically. Um, some notes on this one before we move on to the, the next episode and then give my overall thoughts on that, on specifically the duel. I really like that this episode begins with Asuka and Kaiser back at the fucking lighthouse. <laughs> Yes, which is that their, is their favorite spot. It is their favorite spot. They're just kind of chilling there, and I think that's also where I think they start to notice that I think darkness is coming. Um, this intro with darkness when he shows up to the place, when he hang glides in, and then he takes off his hang glider, and when he removes his hang glider, it fucking bursts into fire. <laughs> yes, because he he lands and pops it off and then it just bursts into flames yeah while it's raining i thought that was a great shot i was like damn that's a fan fucking testing shot for this character um we haven't been mentioning it but judai has been putting on these these increasingly amazing uh sleeping disguises and in this episode he puts a fake face over his face yeah it's like a isn't it like a drawing that he wears like a mask yeah, I have it right here saved, so you can see it right here. But it's very much a... It's a cartoony face, but it still kind of works. That's yes, he, that <laughs> one's so good. <laughs> it's a very good uh, gag, and I really uh. like it. So I like that they do it here. I also like that they are building up these Phantom Beasts, and knowing I know what their effect is. And the phantom, the sacred beast or the phantom beast, whatever way you want to call them, uh, they're not trash, but they're very hard to summon. Like, if you thought summoning an Egyptian god card was hard, imagine trying to have three fiends on the field at the same time, or three continuous trap cards on the field at the same time, or having three continuous spells out on the field at the same time it's not like nowadays where there's just a card that says hey summon one of them don't worry about just it just bring it out yeah yeah it wasn't like that back in the day you had to really like focus on one of them and build your deck around it and you couldn't actually run all three so it's going to be really funny when we do get to the part where i think someone uses all three of them in the same deck and we see how the fuck because it's really not possible i mean it's it's anime rules where he's literally just like, I drew every fucking thing that I need. Go! <laughs> and plays all of them. Yeah. Um, Specific cards and stuff like that, so. Yeah. I look forward to it, but that's all I have to say for specific things for this episode, so let's finish it off in the next one, which is Doomsday Duel Part 2, or Versus Darkness Second Part, Red Eyes Darkness Dragon's Attack. So, in Part 2, uh, the duel continues... Eventually, Judai does win um, after some bullshit goes on, as one does. But this is where we first see Red Eyes Darkness Dragon, which is like the evolved version of Red Eyes Black Dragon. The very because the... Night Shroud, Night Shroud slash Darkness deck is a Red Eyes archetype deck. Yeah, this is also the first of the very many Red Eyes, but Red Eyes something Dragon, where they're like, we need Red Eyes to be better. So they just keep like they uh, Konami does this every couple years. It's not like Blue Eyes and Dark Magician where they're like, we'll just release spell or trap cards that make them better, or like extra deck monsters that make them better. For Red Eyes specifically, he needs to undergo a complete metamorphosis into a brand new, better card. Well, I kind of like that because if you remember, um, the whole lore of it was that like Blue Eyes was power, but Red Eyes was potential. Mm. So the whole thing was that like. Blue Eyes was already as good as he can get. Like, you can't be better than a Blue Eyes White Dragon. But a Red Eyes Black Dragon has, like, the potential to be all these different things. So I kind of like that he's, like, constantly changing into other forms and stuff. You know what? You're right about that. That is actually a very cool thing I've never noticed. But that's a good, that's actually cool. Uh, continue on with how the, the episode goes here. Oh, yeah, okay. So Judai wins the duel. Um, the evil soul that is darkness is um, 
sucked out into the card because he lost the Duel of Darkness. Um, and then they look over to the Duelist, and it turns out that the Duelist was Asuka's lost brother, Fubuki. Um, his soul was not sealed away thanks to the Shadow game. He was actually freed by it because uh, Darkness's soul was taken instead. And then uh, Manjome, Daichi, and Kaiser appear. Everyone says that, oh, we're okay, and oh my god, it's Asuka's brother. Holy fuck, what the hell? And the episode kind of ends on the reveal that they now have Asuka's brother back. It was actually kind of, uh, it was very nicely emotional there at the end, because the, the person who's playing Asuka really sells that, holy shit, it's him. I thought she did a very good job with that. Um, so yeah, this specific episode. Uh, this entire duel... This specific one right here. I thought it was really fun. I like the whole setting of dueling in an active volcano. <laughs> it was a very uh, fun touch. And the like specific battlefield is going... Like every time he summons like the red eyes, like there's lava dragons that show up. And they like make things stronger. And also Darkness is doing a real good job just like setting everything up. And also Judai is just getting continuously really fucked up as thing goes on. Like... When we ended the episode on the previous one, he was, like, literally beaten all the hell. He needed to draw something, and the episode literally, literally ends with him going, like, okay, draw. And then it's like, okay, next episode, go. And when I was seeing that, I was like, fuck, I really need to see this next episode, but I have to work. So I had to actually pause and be like, God damn it, I need to fucking finish work. Let me get to that real quick. But I thought it, was, it did a very good job building up and having an actual kind of struggle duel for him, which is, I think... The first since Kaiser, he didn't really struggle against Kaiser. He really just got his back blown out. By yeah, Kaiser. that wasn't even really. Yeah, he just got his shit wrecked completely, one hundred percent. But this is, I think, one of the first times where he's like struggling, and he's also like trying to find a way to kind of win, and it's actually kind of tough for him. Um, I really liked when he summoned Thunder Giant, and he fucking pile drives Red Eyes into the lava. <laughs> Yes, because Thunder Giant blows, and its effect yes. only works on shit weaker than it already is. Yes, so it wouldn't work on it, but it was. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, Thunder Giant, you, you fucking trash monster. You couldn't even, like, even if he had Skyscraper, he couldn't do anything because they share the same attack. So literally all he could do was... Yeah, Skyscraper won't raise if it's a tie, only if you're weaker. Mm-hmm. So he completely, but that shot of him fucking nose diving the red eyes into lava was amazing. I love that shit. That's good stuff right there. Um, there's a part where Darkness says, to grant their wishes, I will summon the ultimate dragon here. And the next card he plays is, and his next words are, I summon red eyes ba baby chick in attack position. Yeah, the red eyes black chick. Yeah, obviously it's a good setup for what he's going to summon the ultimate monster, but I really did think it was funny that he hyped it up so much, and the next card he played was the baby version, the red-eyes black chick, um, which is pretty good. And then when he actually does summon all the big stuff and he's able to eventually win, I thought it was well done as well. Like, in general, this duel is... A good showing of how much I think Judai is kind of advanced because he's using a lot of his elemental heroes, but he's also using them in very interesting ways. Like he's like, for example, he summons Rampart Blaster in the beginning, um, but then Rampart Blaster has something equipped to her, so chances are he's gonna be she's gonna be destroyed next turn. So instead, he uses Defusion to kind of get rid of that. So it's kind of a playing around the fact that he's Fusion summoning a whole bunch, but he's also able to realize like. He, it's kind of that thing of like, you know how Yugi's always going to win because he'll usually summon Dark Magician and then I'll have some kind of amazing new card that he just kind of came out. Where Judai's just kind of like fighting for his life with elemental heroes, trying his damnedest to summon <laughs> what fusion monster that he can. And he's having a great time doing it. And I think there's something very good there where it's like, he doesn't really top deck like the most amazing cards. Like he's not out here being like, I've just summoned Regeki. He's out here going like, I top deck Avion. Yes, <laughs> this is the card I needed. Let's go. Yeah, well, it's different because like you said, with Yugi, Yugi would... Oh, I have Dark Magician now, and, like, shit's about to go my way. You know, I'm going to play whatever. Oh, this time I have this new card that I'll never use again. I'm only using right here kind of yeah. thing. 
Uh, whereas Judai's duels, they're fun to me because he pretty much uses the same core set of cards in most of his duels, and it's just different combinations that he plays them in as mm-hmm. he goes through them uh, until he gets until the deck overhaul. He gets a, a new deck later on, but. Yeah. Uh, um, and and he does get cards where it's kind of like you know like bubble shuffle and shit like that. But he will use those cards again. And it's not like Yugi where he'll like get Mystic Box and then it's like Mystic Box does not show up for another tw- <laughs> another year. Yeah, uh, I play Thousand Knives and then I don't play it again until season six. <laughs> yes. Like- yeah, never shown again. But here they actually do good where it's like, no, he has Bubble Shuffle again because that's like an actual card that he uses. So he actually reuses a lot of the cards that are usually one-offs. And it doesn't always win him the game. Sometimes it's just literally like, like sometimes he'll just put um, Spark Blaster and then his move will be like, the the enemy will be like, what's your next move, idiot? And then his move is, I put Spark, I use Spark Blaster to put Spark Man in defense mode and I end my turn. Like, he's out here doing his best with a deck that is not the greatest, but he's making it work, and I think that's something to be kind of applauded, I think, for a main character. He might have the worst deck supported by some of the greatest cards in the world, is what I'll say. And I think that's a that's a, that's a a general motto and feeling that should exist in actual Yu-Gi-Oh! Of, I love these elemental heroes... The actual cards themselves are not great, but I have solemn judgment. I have bought a greed, and god damn it, I'm going to make this work. Yeah, I mean that really is kind of what it does. It's like uh I've got, you know, solemn judgment, I've got monster reborn, I've got Mirage of Nightmare, and I'm making it happen. Uh, yeah, I'm making it work, and I think there's something beautiful in that <laughs> that I really Shitty love. Archetype with all the broken staples. Yes, because even if like even if I looked at some of the other protagonists, for example, like um, I'll, I guess I'll just move way ahead and go to arc five or something. Like the pendulums and the pendulum scale are so crazy broken. People think think the dude's cheating. <laughs> like the. Um, like, I feel like a lot of people have like these really like Stardust Dragon, for example, an extremely busted card. Um, stuff like that. Usually their decks are crazy built in such a way, and Ju- Ju- Judai doesn't really have that for me, at least. He has a lot of good support cards, but the actual cards themselves are not the greatest, which I I kind of like about it. It makes it more enjoyable. And to be fair to, I guess, uh, Yuya and stuff like that, he is using Hip Hippo, but I'll say Hip Hippo is probably still better than most elemental hero normal <laughs> normal cards. Yeah, I mean, it's hard not to be better than a monster with 1,000 attack and 1,000 defense. Yeah, yeah, but I hope I, we, I've we showed it off. But I that was something I really liked, and I feel like this duel, it made it when he actually won. I actually did feel like it was an underdog kind of feeling to it. Because like I said, his deck isn't really the best, but he's got a lot of good support cards that he's making it work. And so I feel like it makes it like that, like duels like this, they end up feeling actual legitimately like back and forth-ish. It's not like Yugi where... Yeah, it kind of goes back and forth, but you know for a fact he's about to top deck something fucking insane. And to be fair, Judai does that too, but it's different because the cards he top decks as something like Bubble Shuffle. It's not something you would expect to actually be like uh, crazy. Yeah, or he or top decks like whatever hero he needs for a fusion at the time. Yeah. Instead of just like, ah, I drew Mirror Force. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. I've drawn the Egyptian God card. This card that can't be targeted, can't be destroyed, is super powerful and at 4,000 attack. Judai is like, oh man, I got Bubble Man. Let's go. I can make, um, <laughs> I can make Tempest. I can do it. I think I have enough resources. Uh, so yeah, I think that's what makes his duels like this specifically. I think this is the the culmination of everything. Where I'm like, I'm I'm just like watching him duel. I think that's a tantamount to like enjoying a Yu Gi Oh thing. Is do I like seeing the main character duel? And Judai, I definitely do. Whenever he's doing it, whenever he's doing his stuff up there, I'm enjoying it. That's my current feeling on that. But yeah, and it really cements it in this episode. I think this duel is great. And like I said, it's the first one where he's actually an underdog. It's not like Kaiser where he's clearly outmatched and he gets blown out of proportions. This one's actually a good victory on his side. A well-earned one as well. And a good, like, establishment for these dudes who are the... What are they called in J- Japan? The Seven... The Seven Stars. The Seven in Stars, English, yeah. they are the Shadow Riders. Yeah, that's why I'm constantly getting confused about what to call them. But I, it was a good introduction to them. 
as well. Don't know why they changed that. Not really sure what whatever what it is about the seven stars that is like offensive. Can't call them that. It's got to be something else. But yeah, they're the like Shadow that. Riders in the dub. Hmm. Yeah, it's an interesting change for sure. But yeah, how do you feel about it? It's cool. Um, I really like Red Eyes. <laughs> it's one of my favorite cards. Um, Red Eyes is pretty cool. So it's cool seeing all of like the Red Eyes support cards. Again, I really like that GX uses archetype like cards because you know Joey had Red Eyes, but then he just had like shit. Like his deck was like fucking Swords Insect and Queen and shit. Star. Like, yeah, Swords of a Land Star and fucking Insect Queen and like Alligator Baby Dragon Sword. or whatever. Um, so it's cool like to see, especially with a legacy card like Red Eyes, where it's not like um, really a new thing. It's it's a card that we all know. It's like you know an iconic dual monsters card. Uh, getting reused here is really cool. Um, and I really like Judai's the way that he wins, which is with the um, Wild Edge and Skyscraper. Something about Judai attacking with Skyscraper for game is like iconic <laughs> GX. Like that's, That is GX. Uh, so I love yeah. that. He's out here living the life that everyone who played Element of Heroes back then wanted to live, which was winning with Skyscraper instead of losing because Skyscraper was not enough to save you. <laughs> Absolutely amazing stuff right there for sure. Zen? Did I lose you again? Uh, no, I'm still here. Oh, okay, there I am. Good, okay. I'm here. I'm, I'm alive. There. Okay, good. <laughs> Uh, anything else specific to say? Uh, no, nothing too crazy. Um, I don't know if you've watched ahead or not. I'm guessing you haven't. Uh, but I like Fubuki. Um, I think he's pretty cool. He he's a very like uh, out there character, so he's fun, and I, I enjoy that he joins in right at this point. Mm. Um, he's got some cool stuff that he does later on as well. Yeah, no, I, I haven't seen a head yet. I wanted to, okay. but for the sake of the show, I don't do it. That's best, yeah. yeah. And also, just for, for scheduling's sake, um, we will be watching the full five because there is a three-parter coming up next. Really? Um, yes. It is a, a full-on three-part duel, which is going to be uh, against the second of the seven stars. Mm-hmm. And then there's two one-off episodes, one of which I think... Well, actually, I think you'll really enjoy all of these episodes. I think they're all really good. Um, but two of the one-off episodes, I guess both of them, you will like uh, a lot, in my opinion. Okay. I'm really looking forward to seeing more of GX. I think it's kind of hitting its stride. It's done a good job so far. So I'm, I'm, I can't wait for next Thursday when I can see all five of these episodes so they're fresh in my mind for when I can talk about them. <laughs> but thank you very much, everyone, for watching all the way here to the end. We thank you a whole bunch. Uh, we hope you're enjoying Yu-Gi-Oh! GX as well. Uh, I don't remember the outro for this because, as I mentioned in Gintama, I completely forgot it, but I will remember it for next week. <laughs> But thank you very much for joining us uh, for this. It's a hell of a ride. I can't. I. I. There was a part in here where I really thought if it continues down this way, we have to stop watching Yu Gi Oh GX. This is no, the comeback it's, story. It's pretty sick from here on. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm into The beginning it. of season two slows down a little bit mm-hmm. uh, because season one ends on a really high note. Um, it actually season one actually does not end with the duel against the Sacred Beasts. There's two more episodes after that, um, which it, it might be a top three duel in all of Yu-Gi-Oh! for me mm. in these episodes. Um, season two then kind of fucks around for a little bit. Um, Establishes new dudes, right? Yeah, there's a lot of new characters in season two. There's new villains. There's new good guys. Um where you meet characters like Edo Phoenix, uh, who becomes a, a pretty big character from then on. Uh, but the actual plot doesn't really kick off probably until around episode 58-ish, and the season starts at 53. Um, so we'll, we'll probably have an episode of Duels that's literally just nothing, really. Um, but once the plot gets going, it picks up pretty well. I'm looking forward to that. 
join us next week as we go through episodes. I believe it is 30 to 35. Uh, yep. Right. 30, okay. 31, 32, 33, 34. Well, not 30. 30 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. There you go. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you guys next time. Say goodbye, Zen. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody.